Okay, so here we have a reaction with seven unknowns, but only five unique elements. We have cobalt, chlorine, sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen. So usually to solve a system like this, you need n equations for n unknowns. So we're gonna have to come up with two more equations somehow. Luckily, that's pretty easy to do using formal charge and oxidation states. So we're gonna start out the same way we always do. We're gonna make our five normal equations here. So we'll start with cobalt. We have one cobalt on the left side and one on the right side. Chlorine, let's see, we have two A equals D. Sodium, we have two B equals E. Oxygen, we have two B equals 3C plus F plus G. Hydrogen, no hydrogens on the left, that's kind of weird, so we'll put a zero. Equals three hydrogens in the C, so 3C plus F plus 2G. So now we're gonna generate some new equations and we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna start with charge on the reactant side is equal to charge on the product side. Oxidation on the reactant side is equal to reduction on the reactant side is equal to oxidation on the product side is equal to reduction on the product side. So it looks like it's only two equations, but we have four parts of this equation right here. So that gives us six total permutations we can make out of this. So we're essentially generating seven new equations with this information. So we're gonna put a lot of restraints on our system and we should be able to solve it. So let's start by solving the charge equation here. So what we're gonna do is look at each molecule and see what the formal charge of that molecule is. And that's going to be the coefficient to our variable. So the cobalt chloride has no net charge. The second molecule has no net charge. So our entire left side no net charge, so zero equals. On the right side, we have a negative chloride ion, so negative D. Positive sodium ion, so plus E. A negative hydroxide, so minus F. And some neutral water. So now we're gonna see what is being oxidized and what is being reduced in this equation. So going from the left to the right, we see that cobalt goes from a plus two to a plus three, so cobalt is being oxidized. Chlorine is minus one throughout the reaction, so it stays the same. Uh, sodium also stays the same. Oxygen goes from a minus one to a minus two, minus two, minus two, so oxygen is being reduced. So starting with oxidation on the reactant side, we said that cobalt is being oxidized, so cobalt going from a plus two to a plus three, that's an oxidation of one. It's in our A molecule, so times A, and we have one cobalt atom in the A molecule, so times one. So one times A times one is just A. So now we're gonna look at reduction on the reactant side. We already said that oxygen is what's getting reduced. So oxygen going from minus one to a minus two, that's a reduction of one. It's in the B molecule. And we have two oxygen atoms, so one times B times two, two B. And now we're gonna look at the reaction in reverse. We have oxidation on the product side. So going from the right side of the equation to the left. So on the product side, we have oxygen going from minus two to a minus one. So that is an oxidation of one. So we have one C molecule, so times C and we have three oxygens in that molecule, so times three. We've also got oxygen being oxidized in the F molecule, so oxidized by one times F times one oxygen in that molecule, and the same thing in the G molecule. We have an oxygen going from minus two to minus one, so oxidation by one in the G molecule, and we have one oxygen there. So we have one times C times three, so three C plus F plus G. Okay, now we're gonna look at reduction on the product side. 
So we have cobalt in the plus three state getting reduced to the plus two state. So that's a reduction of one. So we have one times the C molecule and one cobalt in that molecule. And that looks like that's the only thing being reduced in the reverse reaction. So let's see. So let's move all this information up here. So we have A is equal to 2B is equal to 3C plus F plus G is equal to C. Okay, so we should have enough information to solve our system now. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit to give us a little more room. And we'll go ahead and start solving our variables. So we'll start by letting a equals 1, just arbitrarily. a equals 1. Using our cobalt equation, a and c are equal, so that would mean c also equals 1. And we can go down to our chlorine equation. So we see that 2a equals d. So that means d equals 2a, a is 1, so d equals 2. And that's about as far as we can go using our five normal equations here. So we'll come over here and we'll use this right here, a equals 2b to solve for b. So we have 2b equals a. A is 1, so divide both sides by 2, b equals 1 half. So we've got a, b, c, and d. So now we can use our sodium equation to solve for e. So e is equal to 2b, b is 1 half, so e is equal to 1. So now what's the easiest way to solve for f and g? Looks like our charge equation only has an F in it, so we can use that. So what we're going to do is move our F to the left side of the equation, so our negative F becomes a positive F when we move it over. So F equals negative D plus E. Let's see, D is equal to two, so that's negative two. E is equal to one plus one. So F is equal to negative one. So now we should be able to solve for g pretty easily. I just got to figure out which equation we want to use to do that. Uh, really, anything with g in it would work. We could use the oxygen equation. We could use the hydrogen equation. Or we could use uh, one of our redox equations. So let's go ahead and use, let's do one of the redox equations. We've got 3c plus f plus g. Is equal to... Let's see, it's equal to A, so that'll work, so equal to A. So let's go ahead and plug things in here. C is equal to 1, so we have 3. F is equal to negative 1 plus G is equal to A. A is equal to 1. So we need to get G by itself so we can add plus one to both sides or you know move that negative one over so we have three plus g equals one plus one so two and then we need to subtract three from both sides so we have g is equal to two minus three so negative one so let's see if these make sense we've got a couple of weird things going on here first of all we have fractions which we already know how to fix that from previous videos but we've also got negative numbers. So we'll start by fixing the fractions. So it looks like the only fraction we have is b equals 1 half. So to get rid of that 2 in the denominator, we just multiply each of our variables by 2. So that's going to give us a equals 1 times 2 is 2. b equals 1 half times 2 is 1. c equals 1 times 2 is 2. d equals see d is 2 so 2 times 2 is 4 e equals 1 times 2 is 2 f equals negative 1 times 2 so negative 2 and g equals negative 1 times 2 so also negative 2 
Okay, so let's scroll up and copy our original equation. Scroll back down and paste it. Now let's plug everything in and see if it makes sense. So our A is 2, so we have 2, C O C L 2, plus B is equal to 1, so we just have N A 2 O 2, which reacts to form C is 2, so 2, C O O H 3, D is 4, Cl minus, plus 2, Na plus, minus 2, OH minus, minus 2, H2O. So everything looks good except for these two negative values we have. Well, all that's telling you is that they were originally placed on the wrong side of the equation. So the OH and the H2O are actually supposed to be on the reactant side instead of the product side. So we'll go ahead and move those over. So we have 2 CO Cl2 plus Na2O2 plus 2 OH minus plus 2 H2O reacts to form 2 CO OH3 plus 4 Cl minus plus 2 Na plus. Okay, now let's check to make sure everything is actually balanced. So cobalts, we have two cobalts on the left, two cobalts on the right. Chloride, we have two times two, four chloride on, or four chlorines on the left, four chlorines on the right. Sodium, we have two sodiums on the left and two sodiums on the right. Oxygen, we have two oxygens there plus two oxygens there plus two oxygens there, so six total oxygens on the left. And we have three times two oxygens here, so six total oxygens on the right. We have two hydrogens plus two times two, four hydrogens, so six total hydrogens on the left. And three times two, six total hydrogens on the right. So our equation is balanced.